Life Free Methodist Church. So good to be with you today. Being in quarantine at home has its great moments. There are new rhythms of rest and doing things we might not always have time for. I know many people are doing puzzles, handiwork, home projects, and lots of game nights. We've been walking the beach almost every day and uh, making new uh, baking recipes. And of course, Mark created Market Madness because he missed sports and he missed basketball in March. And one never knows uh, what, what, what will happen when you have a lot of time on your hands. However, being stuck in a house with others or alone can also bring difficult moments. And I was thinking this week about how some of the most challenging moments of my life were in seasons of living with others when things got rough, with my siblings growing up, in college with four roommates who almost had nothing in common together when I first got married, when we had a newborn and weren't getting much sleep. In all of those instances, there were moments I was so annoyed. <laughs> I didn't know how things were going to work out, and I didn't really care if they did or not. We called our apartment in college the UN because all of us were from different cultures with three different countries of origin represented. From this experience and others, I thought I had great relational skills and was mostly a nice person. And then I got married. Mark and I had been friends for two years and we had dated for two years after that before the wedding. We're similar in a lot of ways and quite different in others. However, nothing really prepared me for how hard some of our days were after we first moved in together. I remember leaving in anger during a fight and thinking, what the heck have I done? How was I going to stay married to this guy? How was he going to stay married to me? These are not moments with spouses, roommates, close friends, children that we are particularly proud of in life. We pop off in anger. We treat one another horribly. We give one another the silent treat treatment. We manipulate threaten, sulk, and sometimes even worse because we just can't figure out how to get along. Now everyone has responsibility for their own behavior and each one of us have to figure out what's going on and, and what's causing the conflict with other people that we are living together with. Do you know what I figured out? That I was completely self-centered. I was so focused on what I wanted and how I wanted it that I didn't really want to change. And since I was pretty sure that the problem wasn't me, it kept me from seeing what God was trying to say to me. It kept me from being humble. It kept me from wondering how it was for the other person. Here's the thing. Many of us are cooped up in a house with others. We're working from home, we're cooking and cleaning a lot, we're in one another space all the time. There's an underlying distress about the state of the world. We don't know how things are going to be resolved. In situations where the pressure gets high, we can become the worst versions of ourselves, treating those around us with contempt or disrespect instead of humility and kindness it's as though we're entitled to be rude because life is difficult, so we stop even trying to be better. I think one of the hardest commandments Jesus gives us is to love one another as we love ourselves. It would be great to tell you that in the 27 years that I've been married, things are perfect now. <laughs> Not even close. Some of the disagreements we had early on, we still have. When stressed, like now, we can sometimes still go back to our former ways of dealing with our hurt and anger. And this is not just about marriage. Friends and those who are quarantining 
also need to figure out how to put others first, how to deal in a healthy way with their feelings. We need to give one another grace. A wise pastor once told me, in dealing with others, you have to look at what they're doing and say, is that hurtful? Is it sinful? If not, let it go. Give other people the benefit of the doubt. Don't hold on to things. And if you can't let it go, because it bothers you, because your heart isn't clear, then talk it out with them. This is some of the best advice I've ever gotten. And I think it goes a long way in how we want to be treated when we ourselves make mistakes. One of the most powerful scriptures about how to treat one another comes from the book of Colossians. This is a letter Paul sent to a church he had never been to, a church that was under attack from rogue leaders who were teaching that Jesus was not God. Paul, not one to let something like that go, wrote to tell them how Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus has all authority and is in charge over the church and over all of creation. One of the other issues Paul is trying to help the church to understand is how two different groups would come together in unity. Jews and Gentiles. Did one have to become like the other in order to live together in the body of Christ? In chapter 3, Paul tells them to set their minds on things that are above, where Christ lives. He tells them, put to death those behaviors that don't honor God, those behaviors that come from living on earth but have nothing to do with the Lord who created you for so much more. Evil desires, shameful speaking, greed, and lying. He tells them to put on the new self, which is constantly being renewed in the image of our Creator. He tells them to remember how now there is no Jew or Gentile. There is no slave or free because all of us, who believe in Christ are one in him, and Christ is in all and above all. And then he says this, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against one another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. What a good word for all of us right now. We are not in an easy time. Whether we are married or single, have kids or not, the Lord expects his people to love one another. This is something he has to help us with because in our human frailty, we just can't do it. And honestly, without him, have little incentive to try. I hope that you're all doing well and you are learning what it means to bear with one another in this time. If you need some pastoral counsel, we are here for, me, for you. And remember that each week in the newsletter, we have given you resources for coping. Let us pray. Jesus, we come before you this day and proclaim that you are Lord over all. You have died for us so that you might help us put to death those attitudes and ways of treating one another which are wrong. Please show us what it means to love one another as we ought and in the way which reflects your kindness toward us. Help us to serve one another in this time of living so closely together. And Lord, 
if we are not living with others, if we are alone, help us, God, to be kind to ourselves, to give ourselves grace in moments of difficulty and stress. You so long to give all of us that kind of grace. May we receive your love in the depth of our souls. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Much love to you. This has been Wednesday Word with the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. We hope that you will join us for worship this Sunday. Our Sunday service video will be available at 8 o'clock a.m. on our YouTube channel.